everyone. Today it is all about components, and specifically we're going to take a tour through what is a bit component. Starting with what's a component in general. A component is any composable, independent, reusable piece of software, and we can use that as a building block. It could be a UI component or a backend component, doesn't really matter, as long as it's got an independent, uh, specific, well-defined responsibility and API. But today we'll be talking about bit components and I picked the button component over here for this demonstration. What you're seeing right now is the UI that bit provides for every component. Uh, but let's also go inside my code editor so you can see it right here. This is the button component. It's got a compositions file, documentation, SAS file, testing. I'll go over all of these looking at the UI over here. But before we start going over this, the main thing to understand is that a bit component is more than just a few code files. Each component in bit can almost be thought about as its own small repository because it's an independently source controlled module. It has its own version, its own dependency management. It's got artifacts such as a package, configuration, and metadata as well. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the end, which is how you actually use a bit component. Uh, and I'm looking at this use button over here. I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but here's a general overview. You can install a bit component and just as you would install any other package, then you can use it in your code. The other thing I can do is import a bit component. And once I import a component, I get all of its files. I can make changes to it. I can edit it. I can export a new version of it. And that makes contribution really painless. So again, I import, I edit, I export, and bam, I've got a new version. The last thing you can do over here is that you can fork a component. When you fork a component, you basically create a copy of this existing component in your workspace, but this copy is defined as new. It's got no previous versions. And I go deeper into the flow of using components on a different video. Now we're actually gonna go back to talking about the component anatomy. So starting over here at the top, this is the name of the component. The rest of this overview page is actually the documentation. And every component is documented separately for easier maintenance. And parts of it are auto-generated, like the properties over here with this being taken out of the inline comments in your code. The labels here at the top are auto-generated. You can see that we've also embedded a Figma file since this is a design component. Next up is the compositions, and here's where we can see the UI of the component if it has any UI. So again, uh, components like hooks, et cetera, would probably not have um, this type of composition, and I have uh, different variations of this composition, so useful for component visualization. Next thing is the dependency graph. So I talked before about being able to import a component and then, or install a component and then use it in your code. So in the dependency graph, we can see what other components your component is dependent on, as well as what versions of these components. And the versioning is not coupled to a specific project, which is important for, for flexibility and reusability. And you can actually see a change log of this specific component. And again, since it stands alone and it's decoupled from any specific project that just happens to be using it. And when you import, edit and export, that's when you would get a new semantic version over here and you can see it in the change log. And you can even see uh, a comparison view. So let's, let's just pick an older version so that there are some differences. And I can see the differences here, both in the documentation. If I scroll through it, I see what's changed but also in the dependencies and the code and the testing, everything. And I can easily see what has changed from different versions of this component. Jumping back here, I'm looking at the tests file. So here we write tests specific for this component. And these tests will run as part of the build when we try to either export a brand new component or when we export a new version of an existing component. And those actions will fail if the tests fail. Over here, we can see the actual code files. So same as we saw on the code editor, anyone who has access can see these as well. Other than these parts, every bit component also has an env, a development environment. And that takes care of settings like um, how the component build, bundling, compilation, and so on will work. And that allows, again, flexibility in component types and in frameworks. 
I want to show you another component, but before I do this, I'm going to quickly mention scopes. So I'm going to click on the scope here. I already have it open, which is the base UI scope. A scope is a collaboration server for components. It enables you to export your components and have them stored remotely. And then anyone who has access to the scope can use them by installing them, by importing them into their own workspace. And the scopes help organize components in a shared domain of responsibility. So like these components here all have to do with basic UI components. So image, card, heading, link, etc. And you can see that in a scope, there can be different types of components. So this is a React component, this is an app, but really there can be a node component, an MDX component, anything you want can live in the same scope together. So now that we've figured out scopes, let's jump into another component here. Um, this time, this is a full shoe store. Uh, so it's an e-commerce website and all of that is a component. And if I use the component highlighter over here and I hover, I can actually see what other components are being used to build this shoe store. And if I hover on this one, you can see that that is the button that we just saw at the beginning of this tutorial. Now, this is another important thing to understand about big components. There are no big and small components. All components are considered small and they should be kept small. And instead, we like to think about concrete or abstract components and dependencies and dependence. So a concrete component, like a shoe store, will have many dependencies, many components that it uses to build it. And a few, if any, dependents, because not many components need a shoe store app as a dependency. A button, if we look at it, is a much more abstract component, and it will have just a few dependencies, but we can assume that it's going to have many dependents because there are many other components that will need to use the button as a dependency. So I hope this helped understand bit components a little better. And in case you were wondering what is next, you can go into BitCloud and pick some component to either install, import, or fork and play with it. Or you can start your own component from scratch. And I recommend visiting our documentation website for that, where you can find all the tutorials you need to get started. Thank you for joining us.